Amen. May we rise as we sing the song that says, um, it's called House of Miracles. <laughs> um, and our prayer is indeed to be made alive this week as we um, attend the weekly services. Amen.
Hallelujah. Just lift up your voice and let's lift up the King this morning. We worship you, King of glory. We bless and magnify your name. We exalt you, King of kings. We lift up your name on high today. We worship you. We bless you. We give you honor. We give you praise. We give you thanks, O oh God. We lift up your holy name far above every other name, above every power, above every authority, above every principality. We lift up the name of Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We bless you. Thank you for this privilege that is ours to be able to come into your house, O oh God, and lift up your holy name and magnify your holy name and worship you. Receive our praise. Receive our worship. For you are worthy. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, if you love him, give him a clap offering. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Amen. Today is Palm Sunday. Amen. As he rode into Jerusalem on that donkey, they were, they were shouting, Hosanna. Uh, in the Hebrew, it's Hoshana, which actually means save us. That's what they were shouting. Save us. Uh, and so on this Palm Sunday morning, as the word is being ministered to, I trust that you, you will meet him as your savior. Not just as your savior from condemnation in hell, but also as your savior from everything that you might be facing, everything that you might be struggling against, everything that might be fighting against you in your life today. May we shout Hosanna today to him, to the King of Kings. Amen. Uh, at this time, would you please help me to receive Pastor Betty as she comes to minister the word of God to us. God. We are so delighted to be with you today. Praise God in the second service. And we are looking to the Lord to bless and to have his way. Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for the angelic host that you have brought into our midst. You said the angels of the Lord encamp about those that fear him. God, we're looking to you to loose the bands of wickedness, undo the heavy burdens, let the oppressed go free. And then every yoke be destroyed and broken. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. We give honor to our pastor, his lovely companion, and all of our ministers, one by one, name by name, and every one of you in your respective place. We just thank God for Jesus. Amen. amen. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? Praise God. And we thank God for remembering. Palm Sunday, when our Savior rode into Jerusalem, he was sad. But he rode on a new coat, which represents the New Testament. Hallelujah. And uh, he said uh, his blood is the New Testament. And the, the bread represents his body that was broken. Not one bone in his body was broken when he died, but the flesh. And often when I'm praying, I say, Lord, I, in order to get into the Holy of Holies, I begin to cry, Lord, I thank you for your nail-scarred hands, your nail-scarred feet, your thorn crown, your parasite out of which came blood and water. Because he did all of that for us. I want you to look with me in Isaiah 53. I'm going back there. Because it tells the scope of what, well, basically what Jesus has done for us. And we have to name it, claim it, stand in it, and stand on it. And I was telling them in the earlier service, I usually have my own uh, grape juice and my unleavened bread, and sometimes I take it every day. And sometimes I, I miss a day or two, but I have to remember what he has done for us because he is our Lord and Savior, amen? amen? And without him, we can do nothing. 
I stand on the promise of his word. Isaiah 53. And this is our, would you stand for the reading of the word? And the Bible starts up, do you believe the report? And what does he say? Who has believed our report? You will mind reading with me? I like for people to know what's in their Bibles and that I'm not just making this up. And I tell them in America, I say, some people are going to hell because of what a preacher says. <laughs> Amen. You got to rightly divide them. You got to rightly divide the word of truth. Anybody that tells you not to worship Jesus, that's an antichrist. Amen. Amen. He is to be praised. He's to be worshiped. Praise God. But here we, God is telling us what we have in Christ Jesus that we can claim. Who has believed our report? And to whom? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He has no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He's despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our grief and carried our sorrows. Yet he has did we esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded. Why? He was bruised. Why? The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Praise God. While you're standing, will you turn to 1 John 3? You see, our Lord has done great things for us. And we've got to stand on the promises. Standing on the promises of God. Hallelujah. First John 3 and 8. Can you read with me? He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. Why? What say for this what? Why? This is telling us why Jesus came into the world. For this purpose, in me and in you, in, in the world, period, all of the terrible things that are going on. And you know, the wonderful thing about it, God saved us so that we can carry on his work to destroy the works of the devil. He's using us now. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And look with me in Acts 3. I'm sorry, Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus. And if Jesus had to be anointed, we do too. For it is the anointing that destroys the yoke. And the anointing is the presence of God. In Exodus 33, Moses said, Lord, show me your glory. Let your presence go with me. If your presence go not with me, then don't send me. Because we can do nothing of ourselves, but it's Christ in us that does the work. He does the work. And greater is he that is in us than he that is where? All right, so he's greater than the devil, so we don't have to fear. Amen? 1038, what does it say? Holy Ghost and with power, who went about in healing all that were oppressed of the devil. How did he do it? For God was with him. That's the presence. That's the anointing. Praise God. Look with me quickly. Oh. In Mark 16. 
Mark, the 16th chapter. We need the presence of God. And the, uh, to invoke the presence of God, we do worship, we praise, we magnify God. Mark 16, 16. Can you read it aloud if you have it, please? Oh, I'm, come on. I'm so glad you can read. Isn't that a privilege? <laughs> I, I go to countries where people can't read. The illiteracy rate is so high. I go up in the mountains sometimes and passing out tracts and said, Palia, that means I can't read. I said, OK, have your grand, the granddaughter or the grandchild to read. It's a blessing to be able to read your own Bible. Come on, tell God thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes, it is a wonderful privilege. Can you, let's read, please. Go ahead. Nineteen. So then. He was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them. What was he doing? With signs following. Praise God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Oh, I tell you, I tell you, God did not just save us, but he but Isaiah said, who has believed our report? Do you believe that not only did God save you from your sins, but he healed. He's given us the privilege of being healed, walking in divine health. Amen. Amen. You can do it, too, by the grace and mercy of God. And I, the pastor asked me a question. I told him that's our best private. We're not going to share that. <laughs> he said, but I saw your passport. I said, oh, okay, <laughs> but it's true. I thank God. I, don't, I have no chronic illnesses, uh, but I try to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit because he will lead you and guide you into all truth in your everyday life, not just, you know, when you come to church and be pious and, oh, I thank you, Lord. And I, no, no, let it be a way of life. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Now, uh, uh, God has been singing, uh, the Holy Spirit has been just singing a song. I'm trying to remember, I can't. He does it. Singing, <laughs> making melody in your heart to the Lord. And that's what he does through us sometimes. But this is my story. If you praise God, you will keep his presence with you. Look with me quickly in, in Psalm 21, I believe it is. 21 and 2, God lives in the praises. So if you want to keep the presence, first of all, live holy. Live to please him. Live according to his word. But he said that he lives in the praises. So we don't have time to complain and grumble when we're praising God. Amen? Because what he has done for us is so incredible. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised. Why? Not because he had done anything, but for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And I tell him, uh, what is it? How's the song go? He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for my iniquity. 
iniquity. Surely he's borne our sorrow, and by his stripes I am healed. That's one of the songs that, my, that rose in my heart, because I want to walk in good health. The Bible says that in what, 3 John 2? Beloved, with that above all things, thou mayest what? Prosper, and God wants you to have money. Yes, he does. You can't be a blessing unless you have something, in some way to bless someone else. Amen? Yeah. But, um, prosper, be in, that means not just be healed. If you walk in divine health, you won't have to have healing, have somebody to try to heal you all the time or get you healed or go to the doctor. You can walk in divine health. I will, this is the will of God. These are his promises. I would that thou may prosper, be in health, even as your So you're happy in Jesus, but God wants you to have a good life as well. Praise God. Come on. Somebody tell God thank you. I believe God wants his children. We, we, as kingdom kids, you, do, have you ever noticed? I don't know whether you're not British subjects, are you? You ever watch our Queen Elizabeth children live? You're, hey, our father is the king of the universe. Amen. Amen. God, when I came into the church, the saints told me, you're supposed to have the best because you're a child of God. I said, oh, really? I had never been taught that. That you, you know, struggle is a way of life. No, you struggle for a little while. There's a little wilderness. It's, wilderness experience that's proving us and you're going to go through some trials but by and large you're supposed to have the best in life because your father is rich with houses and land he holds the wealth of the world in his hand this whole universe i like to take the telescope sometime and look into outer space you just can't see how far how big is god how big and wide is vast domain you know, I have been studying some astronomy, astrology, which one? I, I'm not, a, not the one that's the wicked. Just looking, just looking up at the universe and how big it is. They tell us that we'd be dead before we got to the end of our Milky Way galaxy. And that's just one little galaxy. There are thousands of galaxies out there. Our God made all of that. Somebody say, thank God. They tell me you got gold here in Botswana, huh? <laughs> well, Africa is one of the richest natural resource uh, continents there is. Gold, diamond, topaz. I was in Nigeria. And as a matter of fact, I bought this little out this outfit in Nigeria at Lagos Island years ago. And uh, but we were there and they said that the football players, your soccer team, I call we call it soccer, you call it football, was sliding on gold and they had to stop the game. I said, really? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> God has prospered. God, all of this, the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. We are his children. Those of you that have come this morning to worship and to praise him, it's, and you, you, have, you are privileged to everything that God has. Amen? Amen. Yes, you got to believe it. You got to thank God. But I believe it's it. But you look for it. I, I'm, is it Psalm 20? Yeah. I'm, but at any rate, trust me, 21, 21 and 2. He lives in the praises. So, and that keeps your heart. And the Bible also says, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. And I, the scientists have found that there's a hormone secreted from the brain that brings forth healing when you're laughing, when you're happy. And God has already told us that in the Bible. And they see also, there are many mysteries in the Bible. He said, the life of the flesh, what is it? Leviticus 17, 11. The life of the flesh is in the blood. What is one of the first things the doctors want to do when you go to them? Get your blood. The blood tells so much. He said, he's placed the blood on the altar. 
for an atonement for the soul. Come on, somebody. The blood is there, atoning for us. That's why the Bible said, being therefore justified by faith, we have peace with God. And that's because of the blood that Jesus shed. And the blood did not come from Adam, but the blood came from the Father. When he met Mary, when the angel told Mary, he said, the uh, power of the highest shall overshadow you. And when he overshadows you, that thing that you will conceive will be of the Holy Ghost. And he, and this is God putting flesh, a robe of flesh on himself. John 3, 16, I know we know that. For God so that that whosoever should not perish but have what? Oh, this is when Jesus said in John 10, 10, the thief cometh to steal, to kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, but I've come that you might have life and that more abundantly. But we've got to believe this and we've got to apply it to our daily lives. You can't live down in the dumps. You've got to be up and believing God. I believe God. Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? My niece was in prison. And one of the prophets in our church said, tell her, God said, for something she was falsely accused of, tell her that God said his arm is strong. He delivered her. In a few days, the arm of the Lord is strong. You have seen the strength of God's arm. He has delivered you from many things. That's why you're here now. Because if it were not, the devil would chew us up like cornbread or meat. He, is, he comes to steal to kill and destroy. That's his mission statement. But Jesus said, my mission statement, I've come that you might have life. And that more abundantly, not only when you get to heaven, but down here. David said, I believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the what? All right. I'm not gonna, this is why he said uh, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. Because when he was suffering, he took, you do not have to be anxious for anything. But in all things, with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, because you know you're going to get it. Look with me in 1 John 14, I mean 15, 14. All the, listen, everything God said in his word shall come to pass, or God is a liar. And it is impossible, according to Hebrews 6.18, it is impossible for God to lie. That means it'll never happen. If he says it, it will come to pass. Glory to God. But see, the thing you've got to do, you've got to ask what this word says. All you have to do, give God his word. When you give him his word, he watches over it according to Jeremiah 1.12. He watches over his word to hasten to perform it. God will not be made a liar. When the Bible said, with God all things are possible, nothing shall be impossible. Glory to God. But it depends upon, if you just ask anything haphazardly, but you gotta base it on the word of God. Listen, God's word was, is true, he cannot lie. What does it say? This is the confidence. Read it, read it. It's your Bible. What does it say? And this, 1 John 15, 14. You see it? I'm, oh, that's it. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to what? His will. This is his will. That's why it's called the Testament, New Testament. He sits at the right hand of the Father exalted to see that his testament is carried out. And this is the confidence. That means the faith that I'm settled in it. I know that I know that it's impossible for God to lie. And this is the confidence that we have. Isn't that, is that what's in your Bible? Is that what's in your Bible? Oh, yes. 
And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything, what? According to his will, this word is his will. Grab your promise and stand on it and believe God for it. If we ask anything according to his will, he what? He hears us. You got God's ear when you quote his word. Amen. Amen. Not just what you want. Oh, God, give me a million dollars. Well, if that's in his will, he wants you to prosper. Amen. He said, give and it shall be. Now, see, if we're going to get a million dollars, you're going to have to do some heavy giving. <laughs> he said, for with what measure you meet, it shall be meted back to you. God's laws work. And God, believe, believe me, he means what he says, and he says what he means. He hears us. And if you know he hears us, what happened? Oh, my. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that he, <laughs> that when he, um, we have the petition that we desired of him. It said, God will give you the desires of your heart. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. See, the word of God is more powerful than money. I have been working for God full time without a secular job since 1976. Only because God said resign through my mouth. If somebody had come and said, oh, Sister Haney, God wants you to quit your job, I would say, well, you going to pay my bills? <laughs> no, but God spoke it out of my mouth. See, God lives so close to us. That's why praying in the Holy Ghost is so necessary, that God can talk to you. He not only, he said, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Prophecy is speaking in the language that you understand. He not only speaks in tongues, but he prophesies. That gives you strength, gives you instruction, gives you direction in your life. You have to have this person. You can't go. Back in the day, in the Old Testament, they had to go find Samuel to find out where the mules had been lost, you know, the seer. But the Bible said, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit. Upon all flesh, your sons and daughters shall prophesy. And prophecy is the word from God to the people. Intercession or priestly ministry is for the people, the ministers to go to God for the people. But Jesus tore down the middle wall of petition. He tore down the, the veil was rent in twain when he died. And that was so that we can go into the Holy of Holies through the blood by a new and living way. Look with me in 1 Corinthians, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians 1.20. You see, the promises of God are just as sure as your bank account or as your mortgage or whatever you have that you know that's real. That God that you drove today, you know it's yours. These promises from God are even more sure than that. Because sometimes the car lets you down. But let me tell you, God will never let you down. Amen. He will never, never. He never fails. There is no failure in God. First, 2 Corinthians, the 20th verse. I mean, the first chapter in the 20th verse. All the promises. Somebody says, why aren't my prayers being answered? You're not going by the promises. You tell God what he said, and he's got to do it. Have you ever promised a child something? Mommy, you said, Daddy, you said you were going to do it. They'll aggravate you to death till you get it. Come on. They, because they have faith. You are their parents. You, you promised them something. And they have faith in you. God, when Jesus said, when you pray, say, our Father. So when you call him Father, he said, not one sparrow drops to the ground that he doesn't see it. Come on, somebody. Amen. Glory to God. That's your father. My heavenly father watches over me. I sing all the time. I, I'm not, well, not all the time, but a lot of the times. Because the word of God is so sweet, it's so precious. 
And I love to sing to my God. What does it say? All, not some of, every promise in this book, even if you sin, you're going to hell. That's a promise too. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. That's a promise. Those are promises. All you have to, if you say, you can say, Jesus, by your stripes, I'm healed. And uh, Peter said, by his stripes, you were healed. So the healing is already there. You have to have the faith to believe it and get it. Amen. Look at it, the 20th verse. Well, come on, please read with me, readers. For all in him are yea, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. What you say? If your prayers haven't been answered, just wait on them. David said, I believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Wait on him. In your patience, possess ye your soul. But if you constantly tell God, you said, God, this is your word, God will answer his prayer, your prayer. Come on, somebody. If you're praying for someone to be saved, keep believing God. But you've got to be consistent. Look with me with the promises. He said, this is the confidence that we have, that if we ask anything according to these promises, his, this is his will. This is what God is saying to us. These are the things that I will do for my children, for those that believe. Come on, somebody. That's what he said. If you believe, you've got to believe it. You've got to stand on it. Look with me in Hebrews, the 11th chapter, starting at the first verse. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You don't have to see it, but say it. I believe it. I'm healed. I was telling them in the first service, my leg was up like this. I couldn't walk. I couldn't put it down. It wouldn't go down. I was hopping and crying. But let me tell you something. I can move now. Hallelujah. I didn't take a drop of medicine. I didn't go to the doctor. Glory to God. I just stood on the word. I said, God, you said. My mama said, girl, you better go to the doctor or you're going to die. The doctor said, you got locked jaw. I mean, the devil said. And my jaw started to feel like they were locking. And I said, God, you said, it by your stripes, I'm healed. You said, that's crazy faith. But I had the faith. God gave it to me. God gives everyone a measure of faith. Come on. Your faith can grow. But if faith cometh by and hearing by the word of God. You've got to hear it all the time. You can't just say it one time and think it's going to happen. Keep repeating it. God will answer your prayer. All the promises. All you got to do is grab one and believe it. Say, God, my bills need paying. They're going to take my car. They're going to take my house. They're going to do this. I'm going to be homeless. I'm you don't confess things like that. Say, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Look at here. God, my father is rich with houses and land. He holds the wealth. He said, where were you when I laid the silver mine, the gold mine? Where were you when I laid the foundation of the world? Everything in this world belongs to our Father. Doesn't belong to the devil. Even though Adam and Eve sinned in the garden and he took over the devil. But Jesus said, for this purpose, I come. He came to destroy the works of the devil. And he gave that power to the church. He said, hallelujah, go ye into all the world. That's why I'm in South Africa. Preach the gospel. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. In my name, they shall cast out devils. Damnation is to be separated from God for eternity. That's the worst thing that can happen, to be separated from God and to go to a Christless hell. Nobody can put you there but God and your behavior. Come on. If you believe God, 
And I tell God all the time, now unto him who's able to keep me from falling. I'm not depending on my ability, but his ability. As you obey the voice of God, as you hear him, he's able to keep you from falling. Jude, the book of Jude, just before Revelation, now unto him, him, him. Give the responsibility to him. But the Bible said, let every man work out his own soul salvation with fear and trembling. But in faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. You've got to live in the word. The Bible said, let it dwell in your heart richly. You can be wealthy with the word of God and walk in faith. I've owned about four or five car new cars, brand new cars. I go on the parking lot, on the car lot. I said, well, Lord, which car do we need? Because the one I got, I've driven it up and down the United States, going, doing revivals, going, praying for the sick, and doing the work of the Lord. And it's time for another one. Now, being a single woman, my husband walked out on us. When my, my, my baby girl was a year, she was about two years, almost two years old. And I mean, he hasn't given us any support. And the Lord told me, don't bother him. Don't go to the legal courts. I didn't have time running in and out of the courts trying to make him pay child support. God asked me one day when I was praying, and I was praying in the spirit. I said, Lord, uh, you make Sister Mary's uh, husband pay child support. You make this one pay child support. He said, are your children hungry? I said, no, Lord. He said, are they without clothing? I said, no, Lord. He said, what do they need? I said, nothing, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> My God. But see, his, his life was so against Christianity, not really, but his, his thinking was so far away from that. I said, the Bible said, he that cares not for his own is worse than an infidel and has denied the faith. So God had me praying for him, for his soul. Let me tell you something. God will take care of you. And let me tell you, I go on the car lot and I say, I want that car right there to go and do the work of the Lord because God knew that that's what I was going to use it for. Brand new cars. Where is your job? Where do you work? I said, I, don't, I live on free will offerings. <laughs> People ask me, how much do you charge to do a revival? I said, charge? I said, the gospel is free. Amen. I said, I don't charge. For, I said, whatever the church has, if they don't, I've been many places, they don't have anything. I have to give them something. But God will supply your needs. He loves us. You got to remember that where the hope, where God guides, he provides. And the law, one of the laws of the New Testament, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So you've got to listen to the voice of God. Come on, somebody. Faith comes in um, Hebrews 11 by hearing and hearing. I'm sorry, no, that's, that's, that's Romans. Faith. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Romans, Hebrews 11. Read, you got it? Now faith, not next week faith, but right now faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things what? Not seen. But I say this, without a vision, the people, so you got to write the vision, make it plain, write it down, write the promise that you're asking God, it saved my marriage. God, I decree and declare. Now, I wasn't saved when my husband walked off and left us like this. But I tell you, I, I, I tell marriage, I have been in many homes and prayed and God restored their marriage, brought them back together. But let me tell you something, what things so, it's the will of God for you to have your companion. It's the will of God for your children to grow up with their dad their mom. Come on, somebody. You can find a promise in this word. 
that will meet whatever needs you have. See, God already, he knows, he's omniscient. He already knows every trick the devil has got up his sleeve for you, for you, for you, for you. And he has a promise for it right in here. Before Henry Ford made the motor, the petrol was in the ground, the oil, oil was in the ground. God goes before us. What things soever you desire. When you pray, what did God say? Believe. That's where faith comes into play. Go ahead, read on the next verse. I want you to go down to the sixth verse of the 11th chapter of Hebrew. What does it say? Oh, come on, y'all read like you can. Read it loud so the devil will know you know it. <laughs> Wait, what? Without Go ahead. You must believe, but you must diligently. You hear that word? That word is powerful. That means pray for it today and don't pray for it again till next week, you're not going to get it. I, I, I use this analogy in my child, my children are outside praying, they run in the house. Mommy, I want some water. May I have a glass of milk and some cookies? Okay, just a minute when I finish this, they go back outside. They come back in 20 minutes later. I forgot they even asked me. But that child that's really hungry and thirsty, Mama, please, I want, I need, I, you're going to give it diligence gets the job done. You've got to seek God. If you want your child saved, filled with God's spirit, sanctified, washed in the blood, it doesn't matter if they're on drugs, doesn't matter if they're prostitute, doesn't matter what they're doing, you can cancel it. You have the authority of God to stop it. Do you believe that? Oh, he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he will give you what you ask for. Rewarder means that you're going to get what you ask for. You, but you've got to believe it. You've got to trust God. You've got to live in such a way that you know God answers and hears your prayers. Okay, go ahead. Look with me in Romans. I, it's important to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. And I, I pass to keep me posted on the time. Romans 8, 26 and 27. Now I'm going to elaborate on this when I deal with the women and it's the power of prayer. Oh, really? We got it up there already. What happens? Likewise, the spirit. Wait a minute. Anybody got any weaknesses or any areas that you need help in? Just raise your hand. So you got help. God has already sent the help. Jesus said, I'm going away, but I'm going to send another comforter. And it is the Holy Ghost. And he has given us this prayer language. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our weaknesses, infirmities. Read it with me. For we know not what we should pray for as we are. See, you can't see in the Spirit. There are angels here. But there are also demons here. The devil comes to church more than some people. <laughs> oh, yes, he does, just to discourage you, just to discourage us. He, he's, he's always running to and fro, trying to cut off your faith. But the Bible says, hallelujah, we don't know what traps or what snares the enemy has laid up for us. But I tell you who does know. But we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but what? Now, you, that's not, you can't experience that until you're baptized with the Holy Ghost, speaking with tongues, as the Spirit gives the utterance. Acts, the second chapter. God, and, and nobody can receive the Holy Ghost except a child of God. You're already born again. You're already sanctified, cleansed by God himself. 
by his blood. That's why we're celebrating this week, celebrating the wonderful work that Jesus has done so he can clean us up with his blood, get every lying demon, every backbiting demon, every whole mongling, fornicating spirit. It's in the Bible. Uh -huh. and they, there's some ex-fornicators, ex-liars, because if you're really saved and sanctified, you do not lie, you do not commit fornication. And so one young lady said, uh, Miss Haney, what does fornication mean? That means sex outside of marriage, for those that don't know. You can't be intimate with, and the Bible said marriage is honorable in all, but the bed under fire. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. That's also one of the promises. When we realize God is a God that wants holiness, he wants our lives clean. Jesus said in, 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 in John 15, you are clean through the word. That is the power of this word. It'll clean you up by the washing of the water of the word. The word will cleanse you. You'll come, it'll show you yourself. The word is your mirror that you can look at it and see everything that you've done, everything you're thinking about doing. He knows the intent of your heart. He knows what you're planning to do next week. The word of God will discern it. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. But listen, I want you to lift your hand. Lift one moment. Likewise, the Spirit also helps with our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Holy Ghost will pray for you. If you allow him, you are a child of God. It's a free gift. You do not have to beg, but you have to be a prayer warrior, a praise warrior. Jesus said in St. John, the 14th chapter, I mean the fourth chapter, God is a spirit. They that worship him, lift your hands right now, must worship him in spirit and in truth. That's the privilege of every born-again believer. And God loves you so much, he wants you to have that same privilege. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto man, but directly to God. Lift your hands, stand to your feet. What a wonderful privilege that you can go straight to God. You don't have to have an earthly high priest, but we have a priest in heaven. And his name is Jesus. Can you say that name? Jesus. Can you say that name? Jesus. He's the miracle worker. That's why he died on the cross. That's why he rode in making his way, fulfilling every jot, every tittle. That there's someone today that you were sick. You feel the need for prayer. I'm going to pray for you from right here. Just raise your hand. You need help in your home. You need your children. You need whatever your need is. As the pastor said, Hosanna means save us. Save us from whatever we're going through right now. My God shall supply all your need. Father, in the name. Come on, you help me pray. Pray with me. In the name of Jesus, right now, we decree and declare that all your promises are there for your children, God. And we ask that the blood of Jesus would cover, that you would meet every need, that every sickness be dissolved, doctor appointments be canceled, medication be stopped by the doctors. Father, in the name of Jesus, you are the healer. For by your stripes we heal. Arthritis has to go. In the name of Jesus, heart conditions, high blood pressure, my God, rheumatism, arthritis, whatever the ailment is, you help our infirmities. In the year of our son, hallelujah, we believe you, God. Heal the minds, I sign. Glory to God. We receive right now from your portals, from your Bible, God, for all your promises are yes. And it is your will that they be healed, God. It is your will that they prosper and be in health. And God, in the name of Jesus, we decree it and we stand upon your holy word. Let the angels of the Lord be dispatched. Glory to God to meet the needs of God. Meet them in their homes. Let the Holy Ghost fall upon everyone. 
meet the needs, God. Hallelujah. You said you sent your word to heal them and deliver them from destruction. God, let the word of God do its work this day in the mighty name of Jesus. And we'll be ever mindful to give you all the glory. Ah! Hallelujah, all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Take somebody by the hand and say, God bless you. Hallelujah. I look to see the ladies in the, in the seminars on prayer this coming week, according to whatever the announcement is, the days. You see it on the Tuesday. Tuesday at 2 p.m., ladies, we need to pray. Amen. Come on, we need to learn to pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Amen.